Um, now let's see. Um, so that's that's what the top area is for. You have your whole your whole choir to work with. The second one is where you have all your your sounds for the word builder. So first thing what we want to do, let's load up uh, dynamic mod. Now the reason why it's called dynamic mod, uh, the hard mod is taking taking it's it's using the DXF technology, but it's using it from about middle to about high the the bot the top two thirds of the of the dynamic or the volume spectrum, soft mod uses the bottom two thirds, so from really quiet to kind of medium. Dynamic mod uses the whole range from really quiet to really to really loud. Uh, so that's the one we're going to use. Um, now it's a uh, what we in order to make this work. There's a couple things we have to do in the background. We have to go to the environment window. It's kind of complicated, uh, but I'll show you how to do it. Uh, now you can find these things online on soundsonline.com. They kind of give some tutorials, but I'm trying to give you a, a short version of, of what they say, pretty much. But if you have any questions, you can refer back to them. Uh, the environment window is pretty much the backstage of what's going on. Everything you see on the screen with the arrange window, there's a few other things that are going on behind the scenes with the uh, with the with the cords and the plugs and all the things and the ports. And so this is where you get behind uh, under the hood. You can you can kind of see uh, what's going on and how. If you need to manipulate a few things, that's this is where you do it. Okay, now first thing I want you to notice is that I loaded up all these all these multis, these word builder multis. They load up at six uh, multi-temporal instruments per voice. Uh, I didn't load up. Notice I did not load up six other tracks here. I just loaded up just one, uh, and that you're going to see that when you use word builder, it's going to utilize all six. Uh, Now, if, if I had loaded up six here, then I could say, for example, if I clicked on the sixth MIDI track, uh, the sixth MIDI track is, is full of just consonants. I mean, like if I press these, where the notes are on the keyboard actually don't make sense. And that's for a reason, because it's you're supposed to use it for a word builder. So just don't really worry about that, because uh, the fact that when you press a note, it doesn't sound like the right note. Uh, you, you need to use word builder with this. So what we do now is we go to window, environment window, um, and you go to clicks and ports. Okay, this this shows kind of the workflow of where things are going right now. Uh, it's taking all this all these inputs, summing it up, and going through the normal way. What you want to do is click on this cable and delete it, and that will delete that, and then reconnect. I'm using a USB MIDI keyboard, reconnect that just like that, just like so. Now you can move these things around. This is just for organizational purposes, doesn't really matter. Uh, but this is how it goes. Okay, then the, the next thing you want to do is create a new instrument. I'll just put it right here and I will name this new instrument uh, Wim Soprano or Women Word Builder. So now we know what it's called. Uh, also go over here and, and name this uh, soprano. Okay, uh, once we do that, we want to go and create a new instrument, right click or control click and reassign this instrument to the one we just created, which is women word builder. Okay, and then we want to make sure that this is on port word builder one. Make sure that's port word builder one. And then once we have that, then we go up here to mixer, click on the instrument that has the soprano play instrument on, and that's this one. Command C, con copy that, go back to the clicks and ports, command V, and paste it right there. I know this is really complicated, uh, but just hang in with me. Okay, the next thing you want to do is connect word builder two to this instrument. And then you should be connected and you just go up to here click a f pick a phrase I'll say uh, so you can see I'll pick uh, silence is golden and then and then you can hear it coming through um, so that's really, really nice you can type things and it's gonna come straight through 
let's talk about uh, this word builder a little bit. Um, okay, you can type things in English. I can say hallelujah, or let's see, join us at church. Okay. Okay, now one important thing to know is that this is looping all the time. So if I, you know, whatever my last node, it just it just continuously loops. Wherever I press down on the um, on on this thing, it doesn't like reset itself. If you want to reset it, you got to press this reset position and it will go back to the beginning. Um, so you know, if you want a lot of singing to go on, you've got to type a lot and you've got to remember that it's just going to loop. So you're going to have to reset it if you, depending on where you're at. Um, but the great thing about this is that you can use English, you can use phonetics, or you can use Votox. Votox is, is actually the uh, language that it uses, you know, to break down how things are sounded. Doesn't matter what language. What matters is what the sound comes out of your mouth and how. And this is how it kind of verbalizes it or writes it down. If you press this uh, button, you can see how you know how it notates a little bit. Um, if you watch the tutorials, uh, Nick Phoenix actually goes through and he he um, he verbalizes how all these are how they sound. For example, C uh, exclamation point is a CH sound like a ch. So he goes through and he'll explain all these things. I don't have time to explain them, so just watch the tutorials. You can type in any word, doesn't matter what language. Uh, obviously English is a little more easy to work with, but you can type it and you can fix those those words. The way you fix those words on in terms of um, of uh, blending the words is with this thing right here. Now join, this is Joe, J O I and then N. And here's here are all the uh, the verbs or the words, sorry, the consonants and the vowels that show up. And you can change how long they will play with this, and you can change the volume of those consonants and vowels with this. You can double click and say, you know, if you have a diphthong, a diphthong is like rain. There's e and there's e coming through. If there's two vowels coming through, that's a diphthong. So if you have a diphthong like rain, you can crossfade. You can have the vowels one coming out as one's coming in, kind of thing. So you can really control this. This line right here is the point that you let go of the keyboard. So however long you want to have it, however long you want to hold down the keyboard, as soon as you let go, then this kicks in and it ends the word with this and the consonant at the end. So every note that you press here is a different word and it and it shows up to be edited differently. Um, this is just an amazing, amazing uh, capability that you have to, to make some realistic sounds. Um, so as you can see here on the phrases, you have English phrases, Latin phrases, uh, just an amazing amount of of things that you can do. You can type them in, and once you learn this Votox, then you'll be able to pretty much type in anything you want. Um, solo, if you want to solo a word and just work on it so it doesn't keep looping, you can press join. Um, you can work on that. Uh, learning will, if you, for example, if you're working on a diphthong and you want to perfect the diphthong to a certain way, you press the learn button and it will do that for you. The speed, you can, if you, if you're talking or if your word is too slow, let's say you bump it up 250%. Or actually that was the opposite, I made it slower. Uh, let's make it 50%. Um, if you want to make the, the words longer, you can you can adjust the speed like that. This over here, this will give you a different uh, tack uh, for your consonants and your vowels. Um, uh, you can have a more staccato attack, or you can have a more legato one, like a slurred one, for a slower passage. Um, so those are just some of the capabilities for this uh, word builder. It's, it's incredible. You want to make sure that usually that you that you load up the word builder before you load up uh, your actual instruments. For, I don't know for some reason think weird things start to happen uh, when that goes on. Um, Okay, now I want to talk about 
okay, you, you, we can do one instrument here, but what if we want to do a full choir? If we want to do a full choir, we're going to do this. You go to women, keep it on one and two, and press OK. Um, let's, pick, uh, let's pick a new phrase. Um, the, beast, the beast is unleashed. Okay, um, now coming back here, what we need to do is go back to the play and load up the women's now. Uh, men's and women's. What we're going to do is we're going to load up one. Okay, no, notice that you take it takes two tracks to do this You when you're using Word Builder. You, you play it through this one. Here's the flow. Um, you play through a keyboard and it goes through the input of Word Builder and that is, as you can see here, Word Builder 1. It goes through Word Builder and out Word Builder 2 and then out of Word, Word Builder 2 from here it goes into the play instrument right here and that's where you that's the flow so it goes through word builder all the way into the play so in order to use word builder you need two tracks uh, if we want a full choir we're going to need a f total of four tracks two tracks will have will handle all the women and two tracks will handle all the men but within those two tracks um, let me just load this hard mod within those two tracks that is that's handling all the women you're handling the altos and the sopranos now remember the sopranos and the altos both have six multi temporal instruments loaded in them so you're going to have a total of 12 multi temporal tracks for women and a total of 12 multi temporal tracks for men and those are going to be all consolidated into a total of four tracks uh, so a little complicated but that that's what's going on um, but it's just the same process that we're that we're handling. All we're doing is we're just going to duplicate two more tracks and connect a few more wires, and that'll be good. Now I want you to hear some of this allegro agitato. This is from a guy. Uh, this is one of the best uh, recreations I've ever heard for for this kind of stuff. And he's later on he'll use the choirs, but just have a listen to some of the possibilities you can have with this East West. <laughs> So that is just some incredible sounds coming through. You got the choirs, you have the orchestra coming through. Uh, this Hollywood Strings is actually a new one that came out that's just nothing but strings and gives you a lot of capabilities. Um, but you have the choirs in there. I mean, you have some amazing possibilities. Okay, back to this. Let me. Uh, we're gonna assign this as men's, and let's load up uh, the men's part, and I'll let you hear some more of this music. <laughs> 